Hi, my name is Joe Anastasi. We're at the Martin DePoor Center in Columbus, Ohio. This is my show. It's called Art and Soul, an Intimate Portrait. Uh, it first uh, was exhibited at the Undercroft in the cathedral and raised over $30,000 for charity. Um, I originally started working with the homeless people through the St. Vincent de Paul Society at St. Agatha Church in Upper Arlington at open shelter dinners and also later on at St. Lawrence Haven. Uh, met many of these people, got to know them. I would kid with them. I would talk to them. They told me about their families. And I realized these people had an incredible dignity and a spirit that I did not realize they had. When you think of homeless people, you think of alcoholics or whatever they might be. But I found not only wonderful faces and wonderful expressions on these people, but a wonderful spirit in these people. And I felt that if I could capture the spirit of these people in my art, then the paintings wouldn't be just portraits of homeless people. They would become meaningful. And so I started to do art and paintings. I had worked with them five or six years. Some of them were friends of mine. I started to do paintings of these people, and I tried to capture the spirit of these people in those paintings. Every one of these people has a story. And when you think about it, you and I are only two or three decisions away from being on the streets. But Teddy worked with, I worked with Teddy at uh, St. Lawrence Haven. And Teddy's a recovering alcoholic. And uh, we had to let Teddy go because he, he started drinking again. But um, uh, the newspaper had called him when they did an article. The Columbus Dispatch had done an article on me. And they called Teddy uh, to interview him. And he said, most pe people think of me as an old drunk. He said, Joe painted the real me. He said, that's me. Teddy and I were at St. Lawrence Haven one day, and I was walking behind him, and Teddy's a big man. And he has very large feet. And I said, Teddy, how big are your shoes? He turned around. He said, size 18. I said, he said, Mr. Joe, he said, I used to drink out of my shoes. And I said, Teddy, what are you talking about? You used to drink out of your shoes. He said, when I was young, he says, I was six years old. My dad killed my mom. And he said, they ain't never proved it, but I know he done it. And me and my brothers and sister were moved from uh, foster home to foster home. He said, one of the foster homes, they beat us. And he said, they took us, they put us to bed at 530 at night. And he said, if we got up, they would hit us. He said, so on warm nights, I would sneak into the bathroom, dip my shoe into the toilet, and drink the water so they wouldn't hear me. And I was shocked at that, but I said, oh my goodness. This is just one story. Most of these people, I virtually all of them, come from dysfunctional families. Um, there's alcoholism, there's prostitution, there's uh, drugs, there's so many different things. But Teddy is just one story and many times you ask, why are you here? Why did this happen? How did you get here? And then you hear the stories about their, their childhood and so forth. And you realize that it's a generational thing and it's the hardest thing to break. And um, uh, as I said, uh, we work with another program called the Brian Muha Foundation, Rachel Muha's program. And she works with inner city kids. And with over 300 kids in her program, not one child is with both biological parents. All of those kids come from dysfunctional families, and you can see it in these adults. When I first came across uh, this man, it was in an open shelter dinner, and he had kind of an arrogant look about him, like the, the bird that, uh, or the cat that swallowed the canary, uh, almost as if I know something you don't. Well, I did the painting, and it was hanging in the show in the cathedral, and after Mass one day, it was a, a noon Mass on Sunday, and I happened to be in the Undercroft at the time, a small woman came down. She was French, and she was looking at the art. She had gone to Mass, and she came over to this painting, and she pointed to it, and she said, that's my brother Johnny, and she started to cry. And there were about 20 people in the room, and you could hear a pin drop. It was dead silent in that room. And she just, she hugged me, started hugging me, and she was sobbing, and she said, Johnny's a drug addict, and we think he's living on the streets of Steubenville right now. And she said, that's the look, the look that you captured in his face. That's how he looks at you. And she told me that his older brother Jimmy was a drug addict. And the last time they saw Jimmy was with a drug dealer. 
and he owed the dealer a lot of money. Jimmy was murdered, but the, the murder was never solved. And she said, the police don't care about junkies, they're expendable. And she feels this, this drug dealer murdered Jimmy. And so when that happened, Johnny got into drugs and started living on the streets. So those lives were both, first one was murdered, Johnny's life was destroyed because of it. And as I said, why does this happen? You know, there are reasons, you know, when you know their stories. This was, this is really the, the, the image of the, the show, Art and Soul, an intimate portrait. Um, this is the first painting that I did. Uh, I had gone to an open shelter dinner, and after dinner I stood up and I said, I'd like to do paintings of you people, some art. I'd like to do sketches and photography. And people were lined up. They had me take photos of them. Well, I had a photograph of, of him or a, a few photographs of him, and I started to do this painting, and this was the first painting I did, and it, this man had a dignified look with a white rosary around his neck. And uh, it started this whole concept of art and soul, and it was a sign to me uh, that this was God's will that I do this work. And so I named this painting, She's My Mother Too. But there was a dignity, there's a dignity about these people that uh, you just don't realize until you're with them day in and day out. And I tried to capture that dignity in, in all of these paintings, but especially in this painting. Greek is a, is a friend of mine, and I had wanted to do a painting. He's a handsome man with a very black beard, a very strong Greek accent. And uh, he calls me Anastasi, and he, I can't say his name, so he wants me to call him Greek. But anyway, I did a painting of him. It was a fairly small painting. And I said, uh, you want to see your painting? And he said, yeah, I'd love to see it. So I brought it to the open shelter, an open shelter dinner. And he said, I want to buy the painting. I said, you can't buy the painting. I said, where are you going to get the money? He said, I'll give you $500 for that painting. And I said, where are you going to get $500? He said, I'll get it. I want the painting. I said, I'll tell you what. I can't sell you the painting. It's going to be in a show. But I will do a pencil drawing of you later. And he hugged me, Anastasi, to me you are Rembrandt, which made me feel great. You know, I can only dream about being Rembrandt, but um, he's just a, a warm guy. And he and I, as with many of the people that I've painted or drawn, have become friends. And uh, I've met some wonderful people on the streets. It's changed me. Um, and hopefully these paintings and these drawings will change the people that see it. When you... When you think about these people in generalities or in, an, in the abstract, it's very easy to dismiss. There are 700 people living on our streets. 30% of them are mentally ill, so many alcoholics or whatever. But when you get to know these people personally, it becomes personal. All of a sudden there's a face and they had a family. And it's often said with St. Vincent de Paul that we see the face of Jesus in those that we serve. And at first I thought that was a very nice thing to say, but it wasn't very realistic until I really started to do these paintings. And once I did, this became literally true for me in the sense that you can see the face of Jesus in, the, in these portraits. And these portraits have touched many people, but you can see his pain, his suffering, his joy, his dignity, his strength, his weakness, all of those things are in the faces of these people. In doing this work, it changed me. And I'm hoping that this show will change you when you see it. As I said, it's touched the lives of many people, hundreds of people so far at the cathedral and now here at the Martin DePoor Center in Columbus, Ohio. My name is Joe Anastasi, and this exhibit is Art and Soul, an Intimate Portrait, Portraits of Homeless in Inner City Columbus. And I hope you come to see the show.